Now, if you haven't seen my quick tip, I was using the Electron CCS1 to Tesla adapter for emergencies to charge my Tesla at EV stations like EVgo and Electrify America. And while it's one of the few converters you can actually get currently in the US, the charging speed was a little slow. Watch my video on everything I talked about and how I think a CCS adapter for your Tesla is a must in the coming months with all the new EV stations popping up. Anyways, the Electron adapter is good and all, but 50 kilowatts isn't going to cut it. At the end of the day, I really wanted the Tesla OEM CCS adapter, but it's only sold in Korea on the Tesla website. And with all the supply issues, who knows when it's going to come to the US, and don't even talk about how it'll probably be instantly and always sold out, like half of their other items. But here it is! I used my magical Korean powers to get it. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. In today's video, I'm going to show you what I did and how I was able to get my hands on the CCS adapter from Tesla Korea using a reliable and safe company. And I'm going to see if it actually works. What is up, guys? It's Chris with Everyday Chris, and welcome back to my channel, the number one place for Tesla, tech, and everyday life. Now I know, I know, this method may seem a little risky, but based on all these people on the forums and myself included, it seems fairly safe. I mean, I did just get my identity stolen, so this is either a safe or a very dangerous move. Now, real quick, let me talk to you about our sponsor, I Trust Capital, the number one place for cryptocurrency trading. Cryptocurrency is one of those things that everyone is talking about these days. There's all kinds of different exchanges to trade crypto on, but what people don't realize is how much they're losing in taxes and fees. With iTrust Capital, you can actually invest in crypto without worrying about any taxes or fees, and it allows their clients to invest in crypto through an individual retirement account or IRA. IRAs are tax shelter accounts, which means all your crypto trading is tax-free, and it can even grow tax-free over time. The process of signing up with iTrust Capital is really easy, and the service is amazing, and the platform even has a dedicated client experience team. The best part is it's totally free to open account and there are no hidden fees. You don't need to pay any monthly subscription or any of that nonsense. As a special tip for my viewers, if you open and fund an account, you'll get a $100 funding bonus added to your account. $100 for free, that's crazy. To learn more, make sure you guys click on the link in the description and open a free account. So how did I buy this only sold in Korea Tesla CCS adapter? And does it even work in the United States? I first saw a Reddit post that shows a way of buying it. However, a lot of people were complaining about how it rejects your credit card and it seemed like a lot of steps. So I did more research and went to my favorite Tesla Forms website and found that a lot of people are using this company called Harumio. At first I thought it was the name of the guy who buys it for you. However, it's actually a legit company in Korea. Now I already trust them because they're Korean and Koreans are trustworthy people. I'm just kidding. They have everything from anime to BTS stuff to a Tesla adapter. Pretty much what they do is they order the Tesla CCS1 adapter on your behalf through the Tesla Korea website. They send it to their warehouse and then they ship the item to you in the United States or Canada or anywhere. After they receive it from the Tesla store, they ship it to you and it's actually really fast. All in all from the time I asked about the item to getting it, it only took nine business days. And that's usually because of the time difference in Korea. So by the time they respond to me, I'm already sleeping like a baby. Anyways, the Tesla adapter costs around $236 on the Tesla Korea website, not including any taxes or fees. When I received the invoice from Harumio, they were quoting me $274.50 for the adapter. Then they charge a $5 shopping agent and a proxy fee as well as $39 in shipping, which isn't too bad from Korea. After you give them your account info and pay through PayPal or a credit card, and the ball is pretty much in their court. Now I do like how you have other options like paying through PayPal because PayPal has a buyer's guarantee, which is pretty good if the item never shows up, you can get your money back. Also, when you do pay for the item and you use your credit card, make sure it is a travel card or a card with no foreign transaction fees. Otherwise, you'll be hit with a foreign transaction fee. Now, since I purchased mine, they added more items to their product page, as well as changed it so you can buy it directly from their website. Right now, it's $309, and earlier, it did have the option to purchase a case with the adapter. However, it must be sold out since it's no longer there. It seems like you still probably have to give them your personal Tesla information, because how else would they be able to buy the CCS adapter? I do wanna say that it may seem like Harumio did change their buying process, as a lot of people are reporting that they do not have to input their Tesla account information. Perhaps the Tesla store in Korea made it less strict to buy a CCS adapter, so you don't need an account associated with a car. 
So hopefully that works. That way you don't even have to give anyone your account info and that makes it way easier. So here's the next question that I had. How do you give them your personal information without giving them your personal information? There aren't that many ways to provide access to your account without giving them your password, unfortunately. If you didn't know anything about Tesla's, everything is controlled through the Tesla app. And in order to get to the Tesla app, you have to use your login info. Now, some people said you can give them a temporary passcode or create a new account and add a new driver so they don't have access to anything. However, for me, that didn't work because I was the main person on the Tesla account. So my VIN number was associated with my email. So I found you have two options to give them your info. The safest way to go is to change your Tesla password to something easy and unique for the people buying the adapter. You should also have two-factor authentication enabled. And when you do have it enabled, you have a set of backup codes that provides a one-time use to log in. This way, if the company was to access your account, they would have to input the password and input a one-time access code in order to check the status or pay for the item. That honestly seems to be the safest way. However, another way is if you don't have two-factor authentication on, you can just simply change the password and then give them the password. I know it seems super risky as my Tesla account was vulnerable for about two weeks, but I didn't have any issues. They did email me and told me not to change the password until the item ships as they may need to track the item. But when it's all said and done, just make sure you change your password, give them a backup code and you should be fine. If you don't feel safe, you can also delete any credit cards on the Tesla account just in case. Just make sure you put it all back so you have a way to pay for supercharging. I honestly tried to be as safe as possible because I really don't want to create a My Identity Got Stolen 2.0 video. After you give them your sacred information and pay the invoice, the Korea Tesla website sends you an invoice for the adapter, which made me feel really safe. You can also see it was paid and created if you go to the Tesla Korea store and log in. However, it doesn't show any type of tracking information. Once the item gets to the warehouse, they ship it to you. For me, they used DHL. I received an email from DHL with tracking and a delivery date, and that was it. Now, Haru Mio is not some shitty website in a kid's basement. It seems legit, and based on all the people who've purchased it already, myself included, there were no issues. Now, again, it may seem risky, but it's honestly worth it. You can finally charge at CCS charging stations everywhere at almost the same rate as a Tesla supercharger. So if there's no superchargers around, you can easily go to any of those CCS1 plugs. Now, before I get ahead of myself and show you the power of the Tesla CCS adapter, make sure your car is compatible. If you have the new Model X and S, it should be compatible as well as the 2021 Model 3 and Ys. However, just quickly check by going into your settings about your car and it should say something like CCS compatibility is enabled. Now Tesla does claim they should release the CCS adapter in the US soon. However, who knows how soon is. I'm still waiting for my HEPA retrofit in my Model Y and it's been over a year. I honestly think having this adapter is a great option for anyone who goes on road trips. But once that's all done, you now have another way to charge your Tesla at higher speeds. Now, just how fast is it? Now, Teslas can support up to 250 kilowatts of charging power, but only if the battery is super low, like 10%. After it throttles lower, some of these CCS chargers have 350 kilowatts of power, so we'll see how well it works. Just remember that Tesla will not precondition the battery to help improve charging times if you input the destination to a CCS station. I recommend finding the closest Tesla supercharger and inputting the destination so that the car can precondition the battery before you arrive to the CCS station. So we just arrived at the Electrify America with 17% battery. We're gonna go ahead and plug it in, see how long it takes. I have a card already on file on the app, so we'll see how long it takes. We're gonna charge it and see what kind of rate we can get at a 350 kilowatt charger at Electrify America. Michael, you can go. So we're gonna go ahead and use Michael. Uh, they use names, which is kind of awesome. We're gonna use Michael, which has 350 kilowatts. We're gonna use the CCS combo one and see how much charge we get. So let's go ahead and pay. So we're gonna plug it in first. Here we go, right here. And then the adapter is here. There we go. Okay, so we plugged it in, so now I go into my app and I'm going to click on Michael, confirm the session. It's averaging about 42 cents per kilowatt. It's a 350 kilowatt uh, charger. We got our adapter in, I'm gonna press start charging. It says one second, we're talking with your car. 
connect the charger, plug in the charger. I did that already. Connecting to the vehicle. Okay, so I'm at 17% state of charge. I'm at 177 kilowatts, 178. I wish I was lower, but what can you do? 179, not bad. If I started lower, I probably would have hit a higher rating. However, it looks like I'm peaking at 183, ooh, 184 on this one. However, when you go to the test screen, it is saying that my charge is at 176 kilowatts. So again, the beauty of this is that we can use a CCS charger, combo charger at EVgo, Electrify America, anywhere. And we have pretty solid charging rates at 186 it was able to get to. Again, I, want, I wish I could be lower at like five, maybe 6% battery. However, we arrived with 17% battery, which is still pretty good. This is a 350 kilowatt charging station, but again, Teslas don't normally go to 350 kilowatts because they're not made to and it's not meant to. The max is around 250 and we're doing pretty good holding steady at 186 kilowatts on the EV go however when you do go into the car it does say it's like 176 175 but overall it's a solid option especially if the superchargers in the area are not available but again make sure you precondition the battery so you set the Tesla navigation to a supercharger nearby for at least 15 to 20 minutes other than that you're good to go try not to do this because Tesla's superchargers are always a little better if you have a Tesla. I mean, the one right next to it, the EVgo charger, it's, uh, it says it's under maintenance or something, so it's not even working. But it doesn't show that on the app. So if I would have come here and I would have said, oh, I need to charge up, but it didn't even tell me that one was broken, then I'd be screwed. But look at that, 188, 30% state of charge. I have to say that charging at the EVgo this time was so much faster. It might be because this is a newer system. It has a nice screen, everything. So all I had to do was look up the name Michael, press start charging, and then I was done charging. And I'm hitting 188 now, which is awesome. Let's go to the car and see. 189. 189, ooh, 189. So let's see if the, the charger in the car went up as well. So in the car we are, yep, the charger in the car is at 180 right now. So it looks like it's around 10 kilowatt difference between what the car states and what the EV go states. It might be because the AC is on and all that stuff. But like I said, having a low state of charge is so important when you drive an electric vehicle and you come to one of these high rate superchargers, which is why you never want to charge to 100% when you're on a road trip. You always want to charge just enough so you have a little bit of room for emergencies when you get to the supercharger. And Tesla does a great job of figuring all that out for you. As you can see here, I'm at 39% and already my power has dropped down significantly from 189 to 155, which means that we're kind of decreasing our charge rate, which means we're increasing our charge time. So we just finished unplugging. We don't need to charge it to 100%. I do want to say that from the time we charged from 70%, we ended at 47%. It took us nine minutes only to get 30% of battery range with the EVgo CCS combo adapter, but still really, really good, highly recommended. So there you have it. This is not a knockoff brand. This is an actual Tesla product. It's just currently only sold in Korea, but now it's here and it works amazing. Anyways, thanks for watching my video guys and I'll see you guys next time.